how to treat a seizure. You're on your way to the nursing home, to the hospital, to the dialysis, and your patient all of a sudden starts seizing like this. In this video, I'm gonna tell you what to do and how to do it. Check so it out. So I had a subscriber ask me, what do you do about a person having a seizure, especially if you're BLS, if you're a basic life support provider and a person starts to have a seizure, this is the first thing I want you to take under consideration. The different causes of seizures are very important and they will determine what will be your best course of action or what you should be doing to the patient to improve their situation. First thing is, there's exogenous and endogenous reasons for seizures. Exogenous, an example of an exogenous reason for seizures is head trauma. Exogenous means something outside of the body. Endogenous is something that is happening because of a biological reason. For example, the person was born with cerebral palsy or some kind of neural disease. The person has a history of seizures or the person's pregnant. Now, out of all the people who may be having a seizure in the back of your ambulance, the most critical ones are head trauma patients or eclamptic patients. So eclampsia is a woman who has very, very high blood pressure, is pregnant, and eventually has a seizure along with other signs and symptoms. I had one person who was actually nine months pregnant or eight and a half. She was literally cyanotic on scene, having seizures. She bit her tongue, had urinary incontinence, and as I felt her uterus, her uterus was also spasming as well. Literally had preeclamptic, eclamptic seizures right in front of us. What did I do? Along with my partner, we started an IV. We gave medication, mag sulfate. We confirmed with her blood pressure and all the things included. And the craziest thing about it is that her husband, who had just came out of jail and was about 6'3", 300 pounds, was on scene irate and scared and crying because it was a very, very scary thing to witness. It literally looked like it was a scary movie. So seizures are very, very serious. But at the same time, especially as a BLS provider, don't be scared of them. Why? Because people are sent home with diazepam. Little kids who have a history of seizures and the mom is tired of taking them to the hospital administer narcotic and sedative and paralytic type of medications to their kids. Maybe not paralytic, but basically they give medications to their kids to stop and control the seizures. So what does this have to do with endogenous and exogenous? When you have a critical per person having a seizure, let's say a person having a massive stroke, eclampsia, head trauma, all these things, the first thing you need to realize is that there's not much you can do. Even if you're a paramedic, there's not much you can do besides give medication. So the very first thing I've noticed that is very good to do is put on oxygen, high flow oxygen. For some reason, the increase in oxygen, let's say the person's pulse ox is 99. You put them on oxygen, it's still beneficial to them. It'll still help them. There's a phase after a seizure where the person is just like sleeping and that's called being postictal. Guys, literally, I've had like, probably hundreds if not thousands of patients having seizures i'm very familiar with this i've even seen tetanus seizures while i was in medical school becoming a doctor because somebody stepped on the nail he caught tetanus and he was seizing a whole bunch of times inside of the intensive care unit in the dominican republic so when you see seizures understand there's people who have it on a normal basis and it's not that big of a deal. The only time I personally take it very, very like, oh snap, this is a life or death situation. If it's head trauma, a massive stroke or eclampsia. Besides that, just put the person on oxygen, strap them in. If they're having a seizure in the living room or another location, move any furniture, make sure they don't hit their head, make things worse. If you can, avoid them from 
hurting themselves further, put them, lay, lay them down sideways, put them on oxygen, check their sugar. If their sugar is low, then give them dextrose. If, they, if their sugar is really, really low, right? And they're not able to swallow. Personally, what I've done and has worked tremendously is I'll put a very, very, very small amount of sublingual glucose under the person's tongue to the point where this glucose even if they try to choke on it they cannot because the amount that i gave is such a small amount and th by the way you got to have a lot of experience to do this you got to check with your medical director you got to check your protocols i'm not telling you to do this i'm just saying what worked for me is putting a very small amount like the smallest amount that you could ever think of and let it dissolve under the person's tongue let it dissolve a little bit more then give it the same amount again and it'll take about 20 minutes to give the whole little tube of sublingual glucose of oral glucose but by the time you give it for a person who's hypoglycemic and you cannot start a line and you gave glucagon and it's not working then you could do this procedure which is not really in the protocol but it works wonders and be careful with having people choke with this procedure now back to the seizures just transport the patient bro put them on oxygen do the best you can and be realistic if you're a bls provider there's not much you can do like don't take it personal there's times where the best thing you can do is just transport the patient and do no harm expedite transport do what's within your scope of practice and keep it pushing because at the end of the day some things are just meant to be that doesn't mean provide patient care in a nonchalant way that doesn't mean don't care about your patients but what i'm trying to say is don't place the burden of fixing somebody's seizures on you as a person who only took a six week or a six month certification course all right my people i hope this helps if you got any questions if you want to know anything else about treating seizures or anything along those lines i'm here for you if you haven't done so already click below there's a newsletter that i want to share with you guys to help you become better emts better paramedics and better men and women in general all right my people the link is in the description i hope this helps peace